Hello, my name is Claudio Verdamara. I'm a wireless field applications engineer at ST. And in this video, I'll be showing you how to create an STM32 project with Sager JLink RTT support. JLink is a popular family of debug probes by Sager, similar to STZone, STLink. They act as a connection between your embedded device and your PC, allowing for debugging and flash programming. They're available as both an external piece of hardware or as an onboard debug probe. JLink Real-Time Transfer, or RTT for short, is a technology within JLink that allows for interactive user I.O. in embedded applications. It combines the advantages of SWO and semi-hosting at a very high performance. With RTT, it is possible to output information from a target microcontroller as well as sending input to the application at a very high speed without affecting the target's real-time behavior. On the host PC, the JLink software will open two connections, a SWD debugger connection and a Telnet-like channel connection on port 19021. Both are needed for JLink RTT, and it allows a separate third-party application to easily access the RTT data. On the embedded device, this structure, called the Sager RTT control block, exists in memory. It manages the data reads and writes between the embedded device and the host PC. The control block contains an ID to make it findable in memory. JLink can automatically search for the control block using this ID, or its specific address can also be set via the host PC application to speed up detection. This structure may contain any number of up and down buffers, with each buffer size being configurable individually. The up buffer represents a buffer for sending data from the target embedded device to the host PC. The down buffer is the opposite. It represents the buffer for sending data from the host PC to the target device. For example, if we look at the up buffer, the write pointer will be used by the embedded device to write data into the buffer. The read pointer will be used by the host PC and the debug probe to read data from the buffer. When both the read and write pointers are pointing to the same element, that means the buffer is empty. Now, you might be wondering why you should use JLink RTT. Well, here are a few reasons. One, the performance of JLink RTT is significantly high. According to Sager, an average line of text can be output in one microsecond or less. Two, it can serve as a replacement for a serial communication like UART. This can be especially useful for devices with a limited number of UART peripherals. And three, it can make it easier to use a command line interface with your embedded device. This is great for performing any type of automation. Sager offers a software package called the JLink Software Pack, which contains a wide range of useful tools for debugging and flash programming using JLink. This package is free of charge for any owner of a Sager JLink JTrace, or JFlasher device. Please use this link to download and install the software pack, as we will need it for later in the video. Next, we'll be using STM32, CubeMX, and CubeIDE. These tools are part of the STM32 Cube ecosystem and are offered for free by ST. CubeMX is a graphical tool which allows you to configure and generate an STM32C project for your STM32 microcontroller. The Cube IDE is an advanced C or C++ integrated development environment for STM32 microcontrollers. It's based on the Eclipse framework and GCC toolchain. IAR eWarm and Kyle MDK ARM are two other IDEs that are also supported. Feel free to use them instead if already installed. For the rest of this video, I'll be using the Nucleo L476 RG board, which is available for purchase at this link. However, feel free to follow along with a different STM32 board, as the steps will be similar. Please note that some extra steps might be required though. As an example, for the Nucleo WB55, you may also need to disable the low power mode and enable the debugger. Now let's take a closer look at the Nucleo L476 RG board. In pink, you have the onboard ST-Link version 2-1, which allows for debugging and flash programming via the mini USB port. 
In green, you have the STM32L476RG Cortex-M4 MCU with one megabyte of flash memory. In yellow, you have the CN4 jumper pins that give access to the SWDIO and SWCLK pins. For the J-Link connection, you have two options. Your first option is to connect an external J-Link debug probe to the Nucleo board using the jumpers highlighted in yellow. This external connection is beyond the scope of this video, but please take a look at the Nucleo board schematic and user manual at this link for more information. Your second option is to use the ST-Link reflash utility to convert the onboard ST-Link to a J-Link via software. If you're using the Nucleo WB55, Please take a look at this article for step-by-step -step instructions for how to connect a J-Link debug probe to your board. The ST-Link Reflash Utility is a free tool offered by Sager, which is separate from the main J-Link software pack. You may download it at this link. Before using this tool, you must have the ST-Link USB drivers and the main J-Link software pack installed. Once you run this tool, it will open a terminal window and ask you to accept a couple of TOS agreements, one from Sager and one from ST. Afterwards, you can use the utility to convert the onboard ST link to a J-Link, update the J-Link, or convert back from J-Link to an ST link. Converting an ST link to a J-Link is not supported on all STM32 devices, but a good number of devices such as the Nucleo L476RG do support it. Please take a look at the full list of supported devices at this link before continuing. There are some limitations to be aware of when converting an ST link to a J-Link. One, it can only be used with ARM-based ST devices. Two, only debugging on evaluation boards is allowed. Custom hardware is not supported and not allowed. Three, production flash programming is not supported. Four, unlimited breakpoints in flash is available for evaluation only. And five, no support is given for this tool by Sager or ST. These limitations are not present if you use a physical Sager J-Link debug probe. Now that the software tools have been downloaded and installed, and your STM32 is connected to a J-Link debug probe, we can start to create our STM32 project. Let's start by opening up STM32 CubeMX. With CubeMX open, we can click on Access to Board Selector to start our project. This will open up the STMCU Finder. From here, we can search for your board by typing its part number. In my case, I'll be using the Nucleo L476 RG board. You can then select the board and click on Start Project. Click Yes to initialize all peripherals in their default mode. From here, no changes are needed for this example. We can leave the pinout and clock configuration in their default state. Now click on the Project Manager tab and select Code Generator on left. From here, we can select some optional settings. First, click on Copy only the necessary library files to reduce the overall project file size. Then we can select Generate Peripheral Initialization as a pair of C slash H files per peripheral. This will move the initialization of peripherals to their own files rather than initializing everything in the main.c file. Now go back to the project tab and enter your project name. In my case, I'll be naming it L4RTT. For the IDE, I'll be using the STM32 cube IDE and I'll be unchecking generate under root. This will create an STM32 cube ID folder within the project root. With that set, we can leave everything else in its default state and click on Generate Code. We have now generated our STM32 project. With the project created, we can add RTT support by using these files provided by Sager. You can find these at this GitHub repository link. The files also include some examples that show how to use the RTT API.
we'll be copying these files into the include and source folders under the core folder in the generated project. We'll also create a new config folder for the RTT config header file. With the Sega RTT files downloaded, open the downloaded folder and open the L4 RTT project folder we just created. From here, we'll be copying the necessary files into our project. Let's first open up the core folder and copy the config folder. This folder contains a Sager RTT config.h file. Next, open up the include folder and the RTT folder. From here, we'll be copying the Sager RTT.h file. Then go back and open the source folder. And from here, we'll be copying the Sager RTT.c file and the Sager RTT printf.c file. Finally, open up the syscalls folder. From here, we'll be copying the needed files based on the compilers that you'd like to support. In my case, I'll be using the STM32 CubeID, which is a GCC-based compiler. And with that, we have all the necessary files copied. From here, we can open up the CubeID project. Open the STM32 CubeID folder and double click the .project file. With the project imported, click OK and then select the project and click on the hammer icon to build the project. You should see the project build with zero errors and zero warnings. Next, click on the arrow to expand the L4 RTT project, expand the application and user folder, right click on the user folder and go to new, folder to create a new folder. We're gonna name it RTT and click finish. Then go to the file explorer and go to your L4 RTT project location, open the core and source folders and select your RTT C files. We'll then drag and drop these directly into the Project Explorer. Make sure to select Link to Files and click OK. And with that, we have access to the RTT C files within our project. The next step is to right click on the L4 RTT project and go to Properties, expand the C build and click on Settings. Under the MCU GCC compiler, click on Include Paths and select the first one to copy it. Then click on this icon to add a new path and change this to slash config. And click OK. This will give the project access to the Sager RTT config header file. Click Apply and Close. And with that, we have set up the RTT files to be used by the project. Now that we have added the RTT files and configured the IDE, we are able to use the API to add RTT functionality. This is the list of RTT API functions that allow you to configure the buffers and to read and write data between the embedded device and host PC. Take a look at this link for more information on these functions. In our project, we'll be using the Sager RTT printf function to write data from the embedded device to the host PC and the Sager RTT read function to read data from the host PC to the embedded device. We'll be making all of our code changes in the main.c file. Let's open up the file and start by including the Sager RTT header file. Make sure to add all these code changes within the user code sections. This assures that QMMX won't overwrite your code if you regenerate the project. Next, scroll down to the main function and let's configure the up buffer. The first parameter indicates that we're using channel zero, which is a special channel because it is automatically configured when RTT init or any RTT write function is called. Due to this special channel, all the other parameters are ignored except for the channel flags, which is this last parameter. 
Sager RGT mode no block skip. What this means is that if a buffer runs out of space for any incoming data, nothing will be written to the buffer until more space is available. The benefit of this is that it won't block the running program if a buffer has filled up, but the downside is we risk losing data. Next, we'll use the printf function to write from the embedded device to the host PC. This line will output hello world onto channel zero. Now that we have written a message to the host PC, we'll next create a read function to read input from the host PC. Let's first create the function prototype. It'll be a void function taking no parameters. Next, let's scroll down to a user code section and add our function. We'll first call the Sager RTT read function. This function will read input from channel 0 and return the size of the input. In this case, we are reading one character at a time and storing it in the char variable name input. Next, we'll check if the size is greater than 0. If it is greater than 0, we'll use the printf function to echo the input back to the user. Finally, we can go back up to the main function and call RTT read in the while loop to continuously read input from the user. And with that, we have finished writing the code for our program. Now that our project has been completed, we can use the JLink RTT viewer to test it. Let's first build our project by selecting the project and clicking the hammer icon. You should see it build with zero errors and zero warnings. Then we can go up to the bug icon and click the arrow next to it. Go to debug as and click the first option. From here, click on the debugger tab and change the debug probe to Sager JLink. Then double check that your interface is selected to SWD and make sure that your board and JLink debug probe are plugged into the computer. Click apply and click OK. For here, you can click accept. And with that, we have flashed the application firmware to your device. You can click the red square to terminate. Next, let's open up the JLink RTT viewer and go to File, Connect, and let's search for our target device. And you can leave everything else as default and click Accept. And here you should see the initial Hello World message. If you don't, you can click on the black reset button on your board. Then as an optional setting, we can go to Input, Sending, and toggle Send on Enter. Now let's send a message from the host PC to the embedded device. And you should see that same message echoed back from the embedded device to our host PC. And with that, we've successfully created an STM32 project with JLink RTT functionality. You may find another STM32 L4 project example on our STM32 hotspot at this GitHub repository link. This example project demonstrates how to use a button and timer to output messages on different JLink RTT viewer terminals on the host PC. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found this information helpful.